Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm getting ready for the day while testing out a bunch of the new products that I picked up recently from Sephora. And I do have a pretty incredible gifted item to share as well. This is the new Pat McGrath Labs Celestial Nirvana Holiday Eyeshadow Palette. This was included in a giant Sephora Squad gift box because we had our fall virtual event last week. I've always skipped the holiday eyeshadow palettes from Pat McGrath Labs because in my mind, they're a little bit too big and bulky, not really user-friendly. It's not the type of palette that I think I will grab consistently enough throughout the year to really justify the purchase. But since I am lucky enough this year to have this palette land right on my doorstep, I am gonna test it out and share my thoughts with you. Maybe it is worth it after all, and I've been leading you astray. I do have some errands to run later on, so I have no idea what kind of look I'm going to create using that palette. I'm gonna buy myself some time by starting with complexion, and I'm going to begin with my favorite, Super Goop Glow Screen. This is the shade that I have used for years. And then this is the new Golden Hour, which I shared in my initial try-on haul. It was the first time I ever tested the product, and it is is significantly darker than the original, which they now call Sunrise. So I think what I'm gonna do today is mix them together and see if I like the combination. So I just did about a 50-50 mix. I don't know if I'd say the Golden Hour was too dark by itself, but it was definitely darker than what I'm used to seeing. I kinda like this, the combination of the two. It's not something that I will do every time I do my makeup in the morning, but it's nice to know that since I ha already have both on hand, I can mix them together and that way it gives me a little boost of color, but not too much. And then I have the glow, the hydration, and the sun protection. Just in case you missed my initial try on haul, this is the sunrise and this is golden hour. Since I'm using the new Pat McGrath Labs palette, I will probably end up doing more of a soft glam makeup look, so I'm going to save the skin tints. I have two, one from Westman Atelier and one from Iconic London. I'm going to test the skin tints in a different video, so I'm not going to use a new foundation. I'm just going in with my current favorite. This is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, but I do have this new foundation brush. This is a Sephora collection. It's the Foundation 55. This I'm excited to try because it feels really fluffy. I'm convinced that the Sephora Pro brushes are the best kept secret at Sephora. Well, that went on quickly. Can't really see. Oh, it looks nice. You know what I like about this brush? Perhaps it's because it's new and it's just eating the product, but it went on a little bit lighter coverage because it's so fluffy. It just sort of spreads the product. So this foundation is medium to full coverage. It's medium coverage, but I would say even if you don't build it up, it's just very perfecting. So this is actually the most natural application I've seen. You're not going to get a very precise application, but if you're looking to kind of spread the product quickly and sheer it out a bit, this works really nicely. I think the biggest surprise for me so far out of all of the new products I've tried is this Dior Backstage Concealer because I had such terrible luck with the Dior Forever Concealer. Hated it. It's my arch nemesis in concealer form. But I, this received so many recommendations. I knew I had to try it out and now I'm kind of kicking myself and thinking, why did I not try this sooner? I have shade 1C. I would say this is up there with the new Charlotte Tilbury, the new Chanel, which I've really liked. It goes on so smooth and it did not crease at all. I also really like the applicator, how it's that flat brush. It allows you to be very precise with application. You could carve out a cut crease with your eyeshadow with this brush. There's a lot of different uses for it. I'm lightly blending this out with the Pro Highlight number 98 brush from Sephora. It's meant for highlighter, but I've been using it for concealer. It's long and fluffy, so it kind of does the same thing for concealer that the 55 brush does for foundation. Just helps to diffuse the product a little bit more. Because of the way it blends, I don't know if it's really all that buildable. If you really need something full, full coverage, you're better off just going with a full coverage concealer because then you can use less product. You don't want to build up concealer. 
So it covers, it perfects, but it doesn't look heavy on the skin. For blush, I'm going to go in with this Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush 3-piece set. This retails for $30, so depending on your discount, it would be even less expensive. But I really like the shades inside. I think they did a great job selecting the shades. So this is the full size. I did share this as one of my favorite gift sets at Sephora. It's the shade Encourage. Here you can see all three shades swatched. This is the full size Encourage Happy Truth the set exclusive. I'm just gonna mix them all together. <laughs> I don't wanna waste any product, so I'm just gonna use this. A teeny tiny bit is all you need. That's actually way too much. I'm gonna get creative here. I just pulled out this mini Iconic London Prep Set Glow Spray. I love this. I'm gonna spray it right on my hand just to kind of help blend the product. And then I'm using the Pro Blush 99 brush from Sephora, the clean side. I'm going to pick this up. Perfect. Oh, that's so pretty. I really like the shape of this blush brush because you can be really precise with your application. I'm going to quickly go back with my concealer brush and just tap all around to make sure it's nice and soft see this looks a lot prettier than that for bronzer i'm going in with my new charlotte tilbury beautiful skin sun kissed glow bronzer i have the shade 2 medium and so far i really like it i think the tone is really nice it applies really easily i'm going to blend this out with a bk beauty 106 brush I found that if I apply my blush first, then I end up applying a little bit less bronzer because I already have some color to my face. So that's kind of the method behind my madness of going in with the blush first. I think I actually prefer the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer to the powder bronzer. Once again, I look very bronze, so I'm going back quickly with my concealer brush and just making sure everything is blended perfectly. And finally, I'm going to set my face using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Brightening Flawless Finish Powder. I really like this. I thought it was going to be super matte, but it's not. And it is definitely more brightening than her original powder. It looks more like a soft finish, like a soft glow finish. Slightly mattifying, but not really dry. Not a true matte matte. So I actually think this powder will, will work perfectly as a compact on the go or even a finishing powder. I might continue to set with my Chanel Loose powder because that one is truly matte. And then at the end, before I leave the house, I will generally dust a tiny bit of powder. Then I will use this. For today, I'm just kind of testing it again. Still pretty new to my collection, so I need to use it a little bit more. To highlight, I'm going to force myself to finally use this new Dior Compact. I picked this up because it's limited edition and I think this packaging is just so special. The packaging sold me. I didn't really care that much about the product inside. It's just one of those collector's pieces, but I was kind of laughing to myself because I read a bunch of the reviews on the Sephora website and they're terrible. Everybody says it's chunky, glitter, doesn't really look that pretty. So I just need to try this for myself. This is the Dior Forever Cushion Powder in the Millie Fiori Loose Powder. I guess, I don't know, I thought it was more of a powder than a glitter, but everybody says it's glittery. So when you open it up, it comes with a little Dior Puff, little powder protector, and then let's go ahead and Oh gosh. Oh, it's pink. Mmm, it's pink. It's definitely sparkly. It doesn't look chunky chunky. Oh, maybe <laughs> it's pretty sparkly. I don't know if you'll really be able to tell. It's very, it's not really a highlight. It's glitter. That is so weird. I'm just not really sure what it's meant to be used for. Because you couldn't really powder your face with that. I mean, I guess you could. 
you just really like glitter. And then it has a very pretty scent. Okay, let's try it. First, I'm going to attempt this with a diffused highlight brush. And we'll see what happens. <gasps> Can you see that? It's glitter. Oh no, 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 no. Oh wow. No, it's glitter. Not shimmer at all. It doesn't, it looks sparkly. When you're looking at it, you're like, okay, it's sparkly. It's going to look very sparkly on the cheek. Does it look like glitter? Because all you can see is tiny little particles, but on the cheek, you can see every little individual fleck. This looks so interesting. It's a shame too, because the actual powder, the pink powder looks kind of nice. I can see the pink powder on the skin as well. And then there's just little sparkles in it. It looks like a Halloween product. If you were going to be a fairy for Halloween, you would want this on your cheeks. So I'm not sure I will really get a lot of use out of this. Maybe, maybe for the holidays, I could kind of dust it on my shoulders. But I would say I would probably dust this on the body more so than the face. Complexion is now done, so we're moving on to the eyes. I quickly filled in my eyebrows off camera. They're looking a little bit dark. Kind of looks nuts at the moment because we need to get some eyeshadow on the lids. So I'm pulling out this Celestial Nirvana palette from Pat McGrath Labs. And I honestly don't even know where to begin. I think it'd be a shame not to tap into some of these jewel tones, but I picked up a fluffy brush. This is my new Sephora 26 brush. I'm gonna start right here. This is kind of the obvious place to begin, and I'm going to start buffing that in the crease. And I like how easy it is to use the palette. It can just sit open, and I don't have to really struggle with it, which is nice. Oh wow, that shade is really dark. It looks very light in the pan, but it applies much deeper. I'm not going to pick up any more product because I don't really want it to get darker, so I am just going to blend furiously in the outer V, outer crease, a little bit on top. I'm curious if anybody has picked up anything really incredible during the Sephora Holiday Savings event. I know some of you have shared your hauls with me down in the comment section. But let me know if there's anything really amazing or even if you've picked up a dud. Warn us down in the comments. Next, using my finger, I'm going to go into this really pretty pink shade and I'm going to dab that on the lid. This is a really pretty color. I always think it's nice after you purchase a lot of makeup to kind of step back, enjoy what you have for a little bit, kind of give yourself a break from shopping. I know we're still very early in the holiday season. There are going to be so many more temptations coming up and then a lot of the spring collections will actually launch in December. So I'm trying to just enjoy what I have until then. Going back with a flat shader brush, just to make it a little bit more precise, I'm taking it up to the lid, all the way in, and kind of blending back on the lid as well. Using my Sephora 19 brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this purple just a little bit. I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of depth. I'm going to concentrate in the outer V. I'm also going to bring it down the outer lash line, but just a smidge. Gosh, it is bright purple. Going back with my original fluffy brush, I'm just blending out the crease and blending that purple eyeshadow, making sure it's as soft as can be.
picking up my Pro Shadow 18 brush, I am going up here in this really pretty blue, and I'm going to pop that down in the tear duct just to incorporate another color, <laughs> just to experiment. Same brush, I just picked up the original taupe and I am going to buff that beneath the outer lash line. This is the reason I picked up this brush is because I thought it would be perfect right down here. I am also going to dab into the purple shade just a little bit. And I'm gonna kind of mix that in, concentrating on the very outer half, just to tie in the purple from the top to the bottom so that it kind of wraps around. With a blank brush, I'm gonna tap this shade right here and I'm going to use this to highlight the brow bone. It's pretty bright, so I'm only picking up a little bit of product. It's also very icy. The shadows are really beautiful. The texture is really nice. They blend really easily. I think it just depends on your style. If you love jewel tones, this palette is perfect. If you're someone like me who rarely wears jewel tones, it's just not worth it. I stand by my original thought process, which is that it's just not the type of palette that I'm going to get enough use out of. Will I pull it out a handful of times? Yes, sure. But there are a couple colors in here that I will probably never touch. I quickly finished my eyes with eyeliner and mascara. For the top lash line, I went in with this Huda Beauty Life Liner Quick and Easy in the shade Very Brown. In the waterline, I used the House Labs Optic Intensity Eco Liner in Deep Bronze Shimmer. And then I recently finished my Gucci Mascara, so now I'm finishing the Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes from Charlotte Tilbury. This one is also on its last legs, but I have plenty of other mascaras, so I won't need to restock mascara during the sale. But I imagine I will finish this by the end of November, maybe December, because it's pretty old, but it's still one of my favorites. The last step is lips and I have another new Dior product. This is the Dior Addict lipstick case that I purchased with that Millie Fiori collection. It's so pretty, has the same beautiful pattern. You have to be careful that you don't touch it with dirty fingers because it's a pretty light kind of canvasy material, but it's so pretty. Definitely a collector's piece, but I didn't already have a Dior Addict lipstick. So I went ahead and I ordered the Dior Addict refill in the shade 667 Dior Mania. And I purchased these items not from Sephora. They are available at Sephora, but I purchased mine from Dior. Depending on, I guess, maybe how much you shop at Sephora, how much Dior products you use, it may actually be a better bet to purchase directly from the Dior website because they have a pretty impressive loyalty program. So I recently hit platinum member, which didn't, it sounds really big. It didn't take me that long. You know, I didn't try to, okay, I have to purchase a bunch of Dior products that I don't really want so that I can move up levels. This was the final qualifying purchase I needed to make. I think I needed $20 so that I could hit platinum. All right, let's see. Well, it's pretty. It's not as deep as I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be more of a raspberry. I overlined my lips just a little bit with the Bois de Rose 172 Le Crayon Lèvre Longwear Lip Pencil from Chanel. The perfect shade match. And now that I turned around and saw what the lipstick looks like in my big vanity mirror, I think it is the exact shade I was hoping for. It's not quite as bright pink. It's hard to see from the viewfinder because I have all of these lights shining on me, but I think it's a really pretty color. Dior Mania, it's really nice. And I love the shiny finish. I love the buttery feel. Reminds me of the Rouge Coco Bloom lipsticks, very comparable. And that is my favorite bullet lipstick from Chanel. Now, I have a lipstick for my case. I'm so happy, it's the little things. I could set my face and be done for the day. I've purposely resisted the urge to go back with any more setting powder because again, things look a little bit different. When I'm looking at the camera, I have a light here, a big ring light. I have two lights over here. So I get a lot of reflection on my face. When I look in the vanity, it's a little bit softer. 
But the thing I don't love about this powder 100% is that it's not quite matte enough. Like right now, I feel very shiny in this area, which is the area that I like to stay matte. I look very shiny right here, this area of the chin. And not the worst thing in the world, but it just sort of accentuates texture and pores whenever things look shiny. Didn't help that I added glitter to my cheeks with that Dior powder, but I think I just prefer this as a finishing powder. I think it has a beautiful kind of soft ethereal glow. It just has like a blurring glow, but doesn't completely mattify or set. Makeup for the day is now complete. I touched up using a little bit of the Chanel Loose Powder. I also went in and added a little bit more blush to my cheeks, and I used a blank fluffy brush, and I just kind of buffed out the lower lash line a little bit more, so it was nice and soft because it was looking a little bit too dark. So let me quickly go through some of these new products and share my thoughts. The Dior Backstage Concealer is worth the hype. It is an incredible concealer, one of my favorites, one of the best in my collection. I cannot believe it took me so long to try it. Has not creased or budged at all, and it looks so smooth and creamy. It just looks perfected underneath the eye without being heavy. It's really not full, full coverage. So I love this concealer. The Rare Beauty Liquid Blush Set is incredible. I think it's one of the best deals. $30 is already a value, but then you get your discount on top of that. So depending on what your discount is, if it's 20%, it's $24 for three liquid blushes. This is probably a year to two years worth of blush just right here. How annoying is it that I like the two shades of glow screen mixed together the best? I think the Sunrise is my best shade, but I can incorporate Golden Hour by just mixing the two together, and today I think the complexion turned out much better than the first time around. If I have a heavy sunless tan, then I'll use Golden Hour, but otherwise, on a daily basis, I'll just mix them because I think it adds a little color, but not too much. It's still not as bad as that Dior Forever concealer, but this compact is one of my worst Dior purchases. The product inside is not good at all. It's sparkle, glitter. If you like to dress up as a fairy and wear glitter on your cheeks, then you will love this. Otherwise, I think the compact is nice if you are a luxury beauty collector. If you are interested in this product simply for the powder inside, it's not worth it. It's not even a pretty highlight. It is sparkle. It's so unfortunate because this is really beautiful to look at. And then the lipstick is amazing. I think you just have to be careful with the case. You're not gonna wanna get it dirty, but this lipstick shade, the Dior Mania, I think looks beautiful. It's such a pretty fall color and it feels amazing. So the lipstick I would recommend, the powder is nonsense. <laughs> I really do love both of these new Charlotte Tilbury products. The bronzer is amazing. I love how easy it is to blend. I think the color looks really great. I can see myself using this a bit more than the powder bronzers. And then the powder is really nice. I just will not use this to set my makeup. I will only use this as a finishing powder or I'll maybe pop it in my purse and take it with me for touch-ups throughout the night. It's still beautiful, I will still use it, but as a finishing powder only. And last but certainly not least, we have the Celestial Nirvana Eyeshadow Palette from Pat McGrath Labs. It's so beautiful to look at, and I love the packaging, and I think they did a really great job quality-wise with details, considering it's a cardboard palette. Not something that I would have purchased for myself, and it's not something that I can see myself getting a ton of use out of, unfortunately. There are some beautiful shades in here, but I did my best to try to create something different that you haven't seen me do a hundred times before. Had it been just up to me and getting ready for a normal day, I would have gone into these four shades. This is what I typically wear. This is what I will probably use the most from this palette. Although if I ever feel spicy and creative and I'm sitting down and I have plenty of time or maybe I find some really great inspiration photos, I will be happy that I have this on hand. The texture is amazing. I mean, the formula, the quality of the actual eyeshadows inside is beautiful. I'm a huge fan of Pat McGrath Labs, but if I had to choose one special palette to pick up this year, I would go with Moonlit Seduction every time over this. I just don't really wear a lot of blues, greens. If I do, soft and subtle. And that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked seeing me go through some of my new products. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face can be found down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.